All right, now my plan for the end of this week, this weekend, is to publish two videos. One will be on friction polishes, and the other one will be on uh, a couple items I got from Ruth Niles. A meat tenderizer and a couple bottle openers. So they'll be put up pretty much back to back, maybe on the same day. So stay tuned, and I'm going to do um, some friction polish on the one, and on the other one I'm going to concentrate on actually turning those projects I got from Ruth Niles. And one of them is a meat tenderizer, so I'm going to make a, a handle for that. Now I have spent the better part of this morning preparing some blanks that I will turn for some of Ruth Niles' little projects, uh, bottle openers and uh, the meat tenderizer. So I'll readjust my camera and I'll show you some of the turning that I will do on these and the profiles I have decided on. Now I have a piece of uh, Bacote chucked up into my lathe and I'm going to make this handle for this bottle opener with a threaded rod right here. Let me show you how I have that fixed onto my lathe. Now I'm going to also show you a bottle stopper and how this works. So you drill a hole, you tap a thread in the opening right here, and that threads onto a mandrel. Okay, and this mandrel is used to complete these projects. Okay, and uh, I like to have my my tail center up just for a little bit of support. I don't think there's any uh, fear of this uh, stripping those threads. All right, now I have this pretty much uh, roughed out. I still have a little flat spot on there. I need to reduce the diameter of this area right here uh, so it's a little bit closer to this diameter on this uh, bottle opener. All right, let's uh, do some turning here. Okay, if you have a shop dog, it's uh, a constant battle. Here's the uh, rawhide bone. Okay, all right, now I'm going to use a little spindle roughing gouge to kind of take this down just a little bit more. All right, now this end right here is pretty much where I want it. At the very end, I will remove my tail center and just take that little uh, bit of wood away. I need to um, take this diameter down right here a little bit more. And I'm thinking I'm gonna just do pretty much a straight uh, taper on that entire piece of wood. Very pretty. Now. Keep in mind, I'm going to put up a sister video showing how I finish all these projects with a friction polish. So stay tuned for that and look for it, please. And yes, I am wearing my face shield. I'm going to just take my skew chisel and level this off. This is a pretty simple design, but nothing wrong with that. And I am turning right at 2000 RPM.
All right, I had a little flat spot up here on this end I had to take care of. So I'm going to remove my tail center and deal with that dreaded little nub on the end of my my project right here and I'll do some sanding and uh, later on I will show you all these in a finished state but right now I'm going to hold off on the finishing part of this for my other video the other sister video for this so let's uh, deal with that So I'm going to just take my little hunk of wood off. All right, it's just a simple matter of screwing these together. Yeah. Okay, and when I um, connect this permanently, I'll put some glue of some sort in there. Well, that's a long thread. Anyway, probably some epoxy. There we go. Very good. I like it nice and simple and that's that's a lot classier than the one we're using in our kitchen right now all right let's uh, do a bottle stopper all right now i'm going to turn a bottle stopper so i have a piece of pink ivory and i'm going to thread that onto my mandrel okay i've got an idea First of all, for this diameter right here, and that's important. I don't want the wood to be sticking out beyond that diameter. So I'm going to bring up my tail center. All right, now I'm going to use this live center with the threads on the, the end right here. And I'm going to screw that onto one of my, my chucks with a, a protective material on the end of that. I don't want to deal with that little point in there from other live centers. Bring up the tail center stock. Okay, and I'll remove that at the very end and finish off that, that top section. All right, now, as you notice, that was quite a bit out of balance, and I'm not sure where that occurred, but uh, we're okay now. I had that uh, drill centered pretty well, and putting it on that mandrel allowed me to true it up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with this area down here in the top of this and get those pretty much where I want them.
and I am turning right at 2,000 RPM. All right, I'll leave some of that vibration in there. Getting a nice cut, there's my shavings. Can't get much better than that. So that's all ready to sand right there. Let me go back to the main part of my bottle stopper. I'm going to try to keep this uh, shape as simple as I can. I'm going to use a little gouge. This is a Robert Sorby mini gouge. And I'm going to just kind of work on that profile right there. Okay, I put a sharpen on my little gouge here. And I've got to keep in mind that this bottle stopper is not for my hand, it's for my wife. Okay? And I think rounding this over right here is a good idea. I don't want anything kind of sharp right there. Well, that, that looks pretty good. Okay, I am all ready to sand and apply a finish on this. All right, now keep in mind, if you want to see more on the finishing aspect of these projects, you can go to the sister video and see more detail on sanding and applying a friction polish. The turning on this is pretty much completed. So I'll show you the finished bottle stopper momentarily. Alright, now this is the last uh, project I'm going to do in this video series. Alright, um, this is my blank for the meat tenderizer. This is the handle. And this is the, the business end of that meat tenderizer. That's pretty cool, man. I don't know. Yeah. So let me show you what I got here. Now I have uh, really determined that this is a piece of elm. Okay, and it's, it's really kind of pretty wood. Looks like I got some uh, kind of crazy figure there, which is pretty cool. And uh, I'm gonna just turn my lathe on. Thread this onto the mandrel. Thread this onto the mandrel. All right. Now, I have filled this with some fake turquoise. And this is the business end down here, and this is the, the area that uh, will be the handle. And I need to keep in mind that this is probably more for my wife's hand than mine. So bring my tail center up for some support. Now, ordinarily, I would use a spindle roughing gouge on a project like this, but uh, there's a lot of uh, really convoluted grain going on here, and I'd probably end up running into some end grain with this tool, and that is uh, to me, the essence of this tool, it's not for end grain, okay, it's for side grain only. And, and this is really not a true spindle turning. The grain doesn't run the length of the piece. So I'm going to find 
a gouge and use that to begin with. I took a measurement on my my meat tenderizer. It's a little over two and an eighth inches, maybe two and a quarter. Anyway, so I need to establish the diameter, and I'm very close down there on the the bottom of that. All right, now I'm going to take off the end of my my setup here. I need to get in here a little closer so I can profile the top of this handle. But I still want to use my uh, I still want to use my tail center, and you can hear my my grinder ramping down a little bit. A little bit more turning, and I am turning at about 1500 RPM. Now, I'm going to go off camera and do a little bit of uh, filling in here and stabilizing. I might use some more of that uh, fake turquoise. I've kind of turned it all away. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty, pretty piece of wood and a pretty handle for my meat tenderizer. So let me uh, work on this a little bit and I'll get back to you. Okay, I filled in the cracks with some uh, turquoise. Get some artificial powder, and I think I'll do a little bit of turning now. Get get that uh, surface leveled off a little bit. Okay, let's take a look. All right, I think I can. Uh, I think I'll probably need to do a little bit more work on that. I got some cracks, but uh, anyway, we're getting down there to the to the final profile, I think. Okay, I've done most of my shaping up to this point. I put a new sharpen on my spindle gouge and I'm going to do just a little bit more right in here. I think that needs to come down a little bit in the diameter. I hit that with a negative rake scraper just to kind of clean that up a little bit. 
and that did just as well as my spindle gouge. So a little bit more uh, filling in these cracks right now and I'll do a little sanding and finishing, but you'll see that on the other video where I uh, do a little bit of friction polish. All right, now I'm finished with my turning on this meat tenderizer handle. And if you go to the other video on the friction polish, I'll show you a little bit of sanding. I need to clean up the rest of this uh, turquoise that's still on the surface. I'll do some sanding and I'll pick a friction polish that we'll use on this project. So thank you for tuning in on this video, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.